Hello everyone, Darren here, and welcome back to episode 11 of my satisfactory let's play for update 6 and beyond. Now in the last episode we had just completed the steel refinery, which takes coal, iron, copper, and limestone, mashes it all together and churns out a variety of goods. Now this has allowed us to complete all available milestones for tier 3 and tier 4. We also have everything ready to move to the next space elevator phase, but before we do, We've got to prepare a few other smaller projects and factories that lay the foundations for what's to come. So let's begin. As per usual, on the right side of the screen, let's see if we can get some shadow behind it. I've got the to-do list laid out. We're going to have a sulfur mini factory, get an obelisk detonator that allows us to blow open those kind of boulders we've seen dotted around the place. That's going to allow us to research Caterium and build a mini factory for it to get quick wire. And then we can get loads of different things in the MAM, including, I think, smart splitters. All of this is going to require us to expand our power, though, and then we can build a quartz factory. So it's kind of all of the extra little pieces, you know, caterium ore, sulfur, and quartz. That's what we're going to be focusing on before we get to the next project phase. So, I've actually done a scan and found where there is some caterium ore, and I've updated the map here. So we're here in the center on the iron refinery. There's caterium ore right out here to our west, west of the steel refinery. So that's where we're going to be building, but it's covered by a boulder. So we're going to have to go east first to where we found sulfur previously. And we're going to combine that with the coal to create black powder, which will allow us to make the detonators and the bombs to blow open the boulders. And we had boulders up by the coal power facility as well. So we kind of need this anyway to expand our power. So that's basically it. So we've got a lot on. Let's hop in our hypertube, which will take us downstairs to the ground. And then we'll hop in this other one, which will take us right out to our steel facility. So, in between episodes, I've obviously gone ahead and built this hypertube, uh, dare I say, network. It's not really a network, it's a straight line, pretty much, that's taking us right out there, just one line. And uh, I haven't built any extra ones, but I have extended power all the way out to these deposits already. So, we don't have to worry about that, we can just kind of make our way there straight away. Um, also, from the last episode, lots of feedback, and actually just in general, I, get, I view all the comments of all the episodes. A lot of people, I want to mention this just really quickly, because a lot of people don't really seem to know this. I guess you wouldn't unless you were making YouTube videos yourself in some capacity. And that is that the, most YouTubers use a, an app on their phones called the Creator Studio. And this app will basically show you the recent comments across all of your videos. So regardless of the video, I get recent comments. So I see them on episode 3, 4, 5, still getting comments, you know, daily about that kind of stuff. But not that many, I only get about 40 or 50 comments a day, so it's quite manageable and easy to read them all. Um, so I just wanted to say, like, if you're feel like you're behind, you're not catching up with the episodes, or you're not like, um, you know, you're watching this a little bit after it, uh, it uploaded, still feel free to comment it, leave questions or whatever, and I can always like respond to them and update and still use advice that I see that's several episodes old or whatever. So it's just something that I used to get with Anno a lot. <clears throat> People would say like, I don't feel like commenting, I'm like 20 episodes behind. It's like, I see it just as soon as you do it. So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Anyways, here we are in the steel refinery. We have two assemblers that are making automated wiring and speaking of comments people I had said in the previous episode that automated wiring is never needed again I don't know why I felt so confident in saying that because all I did was look at the space elevator and I saw that it wasn't required for the next phase but people said rightfully so it is used everything is used things are going to be combined in other recipes and they'll be used in future so at least we have that set up that's being produced no need to destroy it or change it or anything like that the only other thing is then this we're making versatile framework we're piling that up in here. This is, I just wanted to address that this isn't actually automated. Everything else is in this factory. But this one I have to drop modular frames in manually into this box here. So in a future episode, we'll probably sort out a transport network. A lot of people are saying like, oh, I want you to get like roads. Start, start building a road network and a transport network. Uh, which is interesting. Actually, yeah, we haven't done anything with tractors other than just drive them ourselves. Which is what we're going to be doing now. We're going to drive this tractor out east. But like I said, I've already set up power lines so we can just drive straight to where we need to go so that's kind of the steel factory I just kind of updated the walls a little bit I didn't put a roof or anything on it yet so the exciting thing about doing these next um, tasks excuse me I still have my cough just a little bit <clears throat> the exciting thing about doing these tasks next sulfur caterium and quartz is that sulfur is going to allow us to get the things to expand further right blow open these boulders clear out mining deposits, and we should be good to go and like get further into the game. Caterium is going to be really good because it'll give us quick wire, which gives us more options with power poles, but also importantly, it gives us a smart splitter. 
So these factories are going to be kind of designed fairly quickly. But once we get the smart splitter and then we get also the quartz, which is going to allow us to get glass, we can make more efficient factories that look better. And then from then on out, I'll be trying to design the factories to be as nice as I can kind of make them. And we'll obviously store up tickets in the awesome shop and, sing and stuff like that as well. And we can finally start saving up our overflow. I've actually been really happy with, generally speaking, the efficiency of everything I've built so far. I mean, I think it's been pretty good um, for how far we've gotten with the time given. But certainly one of the biggest inefficiencies is that I'm not building up awesome tickets in the background. And you should be. You should always be feeding them into machines. But I just, I just haven't been. They also cost a lot of power to do that, so I've been kind of not really wanting to. Um, let me just put down a little box over here really quickly. And I'll just put some miners in that for now. Alright, let's pick that one up. So, here we are. Now, it sounds like there's some wildlife around us that we'll get to in a moment, I'm sure. Let's just build some foundations. And just start off like this and this. Alright, cool. So... As usual, I've kind of mapped out roughly what I want to do with this, although the innards of the factory I, uh, is always left up to the episode, I guess. But the foundations are usually stuff I kind of work out beforehand. So the coal deposit is actually up on that ridge. So we're going to have to build a way up to it. I'll probably just build a hypertube that takes us straight up there. Uh, and then we're going to need a miner right about here, aiming this way. All right, cool. I actually kind of lost my train of thought of whatever I was saying before. Apologies for that. <laughs> Let's just get on with it anyway. But yeah, the exciting thing basically is that once we get quartz, once we get caterium, we're going to build more efficient factories that look a little bit nicer, and that I can spend more time designing how they look. All right. So yeah, looking good. So I think temporarily we'll just have to build a ladder that takes us up to the top. Uh, we can go a bit closer, I guess. Maybe a bit further back. And there we go. <clears throat> and just lay this all out with concrete. That's as much concrete as we'll need. This is just going to feed straight up there. And we're going to build on that plateau. There's enough space for what I want to do. Now, see, the thing is, <coughs> I don't really know specifically um, what sulfur is going to be used for in the future. See, I don't look ahead too much. I like to be kind of somewhat surprised. <laughs> I suppose in a game like this, you probably should research. Sorry, I'm just trying to switch my goddamn... There we go. I want rebar and the sword, essentially. Uh, you probably should look ahead, I guess. Most people probably would. I don't know. I'm a weird gamer. I like to just see things as I come across them. It adds variety to me. It makes things more fun to kind of find things out. But obviously, I'll plan within the phases I'm in. But within the phases I'm currently in, I don't see anything needed for sulfur any more than what we've built. I just know we can make compacted coal, and people in the comments said, yeah, compact coal is pretty good. It makes your coal generators last much longer. Um, so, the thing I thought was a bit strange is, well, it's like, well, to make compacted coal, you need to set up a bunch of machines. Those machines take power. And then your power is going to be more efficient. So I guess it's like, I'm sure it must work out, but it, it kind of was strange to me at first, because I was thinking, like, surely the amount of machines negates the little bit of extra power you get. But I haven't actually tossed them in the generators to see. And of course, this would have to be then transported up to our coal power facility. All right, they're dealt with. Let's uh, carve away some of these trees and things. So I'll come across all that once we get to it, but you can always let me know in the comments as usual, like what you think the good rates are or, you know, how to use compact coal efficiently. People were saying even just for your vehicle, it could be quite good, which I guess makes sense. Can we take up that? We don't have any room for those remains. Uh, let's just put down the concrete. And I can just lay a miner on top of this really quickly, and that'll free up our inventory. Now, I'm not sure which way I'm going to build this. I guess straight out that way is probably good. Okay. Not that I need these remains or anything, but I don't know. Don't like leaving anything on the ground. Left some behind over here, didn't I? Ah, whatever. Alright, anyway, let's just cut down the rest of these um, trees. And this will clear this entire plateau. Like I said, this is going to be a fairly quick job, right? Doing this factory kind of quick, hopefully anyway, um, because once we get the smart splitters, once we get uh, glass and other things to make factories look a little bit nicer, 
I'm going to probably redo some of these factories. <clears throat> but I'll have to try and find a nice middle ground way of doing it. I don't want to bore people. I want to kind of have a design in mind and be able to do it relatively efficiently and in a sort of entertaining way where it's like, here's a progression, you know, it's like, you know, this is what our factories used to look like now that we've got these extra components, we can do it this way and this is, you know, then we can just apply that to various of the factories. Something else that's also kind of interesting is that the coal, the power facility itself was designed, you know, with the four pipes and all of that, eight water extractors, I actually have more water than is needed for that factory, but it's designed with it in mind um, with Mark 1 miners in mind, sorry. And we're going up to Mark 2 miners. And currently we have eight... Yeah, eight coal generators. We can definitely get 16, because there's four coal deposits there. But that means now, with the better miners, we could get up to 32 coal generators there. At least. Which seems crazy. I don't know how I'm going to build that. Like, with this, what kind of space I'm going to need for that. Um, I think this is the way I really want to do it, actually. One, two, three. Yeah. Alright. And that's just going to go straight out this way. Alright, just a little bit of grass to cut down, and then that should be it. Yeah, there we go. So that's the area we're going to be working with. I would harvest it if I knew where it was. It's probably below me somewhere. Oh, I think it's in the lake downstairs. Uh, downstairs, at the bottom. Alright, cool. So yeah, let's just pave, pave. Alright, all good. Oh yeah, people keep saying get the Blade Runner, so once we get that, um... Your contract legally compels you to harvest this artifact. <coughs> Excuse me. Once we get that, um, quartz, we'll be good to go. And get those Blade Runners. I don't really know what they do. I think it just speeds you up and hurt, um, helps your fall damage not, not be so bad. And I think you can jump higher as well. Alright, so, this has to come across in a kind of a staggered way. So that's one. One there. Two there. I think that's it, is it? One, two... No, we need one more step out this way, then. I'm actually not really even going to be using all of this space, but I'll be using a little bit of it. It's more for future-proofing. Okay, so this needs to be... I'm not too sure exactly how much. I think five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then this bit can come out. Yeah. Alright, great. That's it. That's the paving. It's really awkward, but that's kind of how I mapped it before. Now, what goes inside here is going to be... doesn't really matter, but um, in terms of how we lay it out. Because, like I said, I'll probably end up changing it. But just to get the ball rolling, this is where the resources are going to have to come up. So let's get ourselves, I suppose, um, a wall with a hole in it right about there. Is that right? I think so. Now we'll get ourselves like a door. And we'll pop ourselves in a new hypertube wall. So people have also asked. Actually, I'll just show this really quickly. What tickets I've purchased. <clears throat> what things I purchased within the awesome shop. So mostly what I'm going for is attachments. So I have the conveyor wall mount, conveyor floor hole. The hypertube wall attachment, hypertube floor. So I just got them in between episodes. The pipeline floor and the pipeline wall. And then Mark 1 Power Outlet. Within other things, I haven't really done too much. Door walls and conveyor walls don't really have these other things even available yet. And I don't, just don't have the tickets. I've got, I think in total, three tickets back at base. Uh, I'm actually still not able to get lighting. People say, like, add some lights and stuff. I don't have any of it yet. I have, I have to unlock it. So we're not there just yet. People keep saying as well, road barriers and structural beams are great creative tools. Because they can kind of snap to anything. And then you can snap other things to them. So it kind of allows you to get out of the traditional grid and that allows you to customize your look of your look of everything much more but I'm like I said I'm just fo focusing primarily on functionality first although I did go with the customizer and get the concrete of course and the asphalt um, so yeah so hopefully after these next factories are set up we'll be able to get a smart splitter and that will allow us to put fall off or excess overflow is what it's called into an awesome shop or awesome sink and that'll start generating tickets much more quickly in the background for us, because currently I'm just dumping them manually into things when I need them. Um, alrighty. So yeah, looking good. Let's get a... 
Uh, where is it? Transportation, a hypertube wall hole. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Left or right? I guess here? Alright, good. And then we'll make this an entrance. Hypertube entrance. We're gonna have to bring power up here in a second as well. Smooth. Alright, let's just get rid of that. <clears throat> I'll just have a ladder there, just in case. I don't know, you might need it one day. Okay, ladder done. So the next thing then would be, I guess what we could do is we could put down a big concrete pillar to make this look a bit nicer. Make it look like it has some sort of structural support there. Okay, cool. Looking good. So we just need this hypertube to come down to the bottom somewhere. Uh, we'll just build a support... Probably just around here. An entrance. Make it an entrance. Boom. Oh, weird. Ah, I guess that's fine. Whatever. Maybe maybe I could push this forward just a tiny bit. Although I actually like it. No, I think it's fine. That's good. Alright, great. So that's our hyper tube that will take us up. Uh, and then we're going to need a belt. And a conveyor... What's it called? So I've actually improved my hotbar so I could just do this automatically. I really should get better at doing it. So what are we going to be producing here? This is a Mark II Miner. It's on Sulfur. It's 120 per minute. So we'll get this one. A Mark II. So because that's clipping, let's make it look a bit nicer and do something like this to kind of hide a slight bit of clipping that we've got going on there. And then also we'll just drag this out. Drag it to about here. And then just connect that last piece up. Is that fair enough? I think so. Yep, so there's 120 sulfur leading up in our sort of double ele elevator there just to make the rock look a bit better. We can go up here. I haven't hooked up power yet. I'll hook up power at the end. <clears throat> Alright, great. That works. So that's going to be coming in there. That's our exit. Our exit hole. <laughs> Alright. So the next thing then would just be getting coal to come in. Now coal is going to be coming in at, a double, at double the rate. Um, so we'll have an excess of coal, which we could use for other things later. 240. Just to make things a little bit nicer for now, let's just get a... Again, let's get better at this. There we go, a wall hole right there. And that's where that's going to come in. Okay. So this should be pretty straightforward. I'll just build another lookout tower real quick. <clears throat> I plan on building six assemblers, and that's it. Six assemblers. And that should figure everything out. Four of them are going to be dedicated to black powder. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, we'll have the line in the middle here somewhere. So, I guess... Even just straight along like this would probably be, be the job. We've got lots of excess space, so not, not to worry. Well, I'll have to build two more out there. Then the other ones will be built straight across. I'll give it a bit of breathing room. I think that'll do it. Picking up multiple fixed personnel in the area. Proceed with harvest before it's too late. There it is. All right, you know what? We're gonna pick that up. Otherwise, we're gonna have to listen to Ada, or whatever her name is, drone on. Oh my god! Don't worry, nailed it. I wasn't worried at all. All right, cool. Ah, oh, come on. Oh no. <laughs> I thought I was like stuck. <laughs> oh jeez. That would have been bad. So, let's just pick up this whatever this thing is. Oh, I don't even have the room for it. I'll just throw some grass on the ground. Oh my god. I can't pick it up. I'm swimming. Jeez. <laughs> oh. Alright, got rid of it. Actually, while we're down here, what we could do really to make the place look even nicer, excuse me, is you could build some uh, pillars to make this look like it has an actual support. And we'll clear it of the trees, like get it away from the trees a bit. Does that work? That could look cool. Uh, maybe another one, like, somewhere in the middle here. 
So it's out of the tree trunk. You could have it right on the edge, but I don't want it coming through the tree. So from a distance, this will probably look nice. Yeah, I don't know, it just looks kind of cooler. Can we have one right at the edge? Or would that look weird? Ah, I think it would look weird. What the hell just hit me? Oh my god, it's these things. Get the hell away from me. Alright, let's get back upstairs, let's get the job done. Alright, so we're hooked up so we can at least just travel up really quickly. Alright, here we are. Okay, so we have our four... Uh, yep, four assemblers and two over there. And then we just need to sort out getting this... Sulfur delivered. So, it's at 120. So just bring it in straight away like this. Now the nice thing with these splitters being placed here is they can go to both machines on both sides. All right, cool. Let's just to make life a little easier, let's just climb this. So this is 120 per minute. All right, in you go. Okay, that's the sulfur line. So we just have to connect that then to each machine. We'll just connect it with the slow belts. I think that's fine. Oh my god. <laughs> Building in 3D. Fun, but can be tedious. Alright, and then over on the other side, we're good to go there too. Alright, that's the sulfur line all hooked up. Then we need our... Obviously our um, coal line. So we'll just do that with, with a small little belt. Uh, that's raised, sorry, with, a, with an elevator belt. So all of this is going to be raised. Hope I've left enough room for the splitter. I think I have. It actually might fit really nicely between these two. Okay. So yeah, I think a splitter will actually fit, sit right on top of these and just feed immediately into both. This one, These bottom ones are kind of off, but you're just going to have to live with that. Like I said, this place will probably get redone eventually, but this is just to get the ball rolling. Let's just climb up, and if we set down some stackable poles, maybe. So they should be automatically connected just like that. I think. So I don't even need to do anything with that now. So that's what we got in the end, okay? Something like that. Looks, I think it actually looks pretty good. Pretty much an even gap on both sides. It seems like there's a little gap there, but there's no gap here. So let's just make sure they are connected. This is connected. I can't actually even look at it with a belt. But this one isn't, so... Yeah, that one's connected automatically. Alright, so it is straight down the middle of the line. At least that keeps it even and level with the other one. Um... But what that means is, I suppose we'll just have to get rid of this. Make another one of these. One, two, and three. Alright, cool. So that should be them pretty much ready to be hooked up. We can put little stackable poles on them to make them look like they aren't just floating in air if we cared. I kind of do. <laughs> Love that that just auto connects. It's really nice. It's weird though being on a grid that it's right in the middle of these two. Ev even distance between the two. Yet one side needs a belt and one doesn't. It's like they're not quite the same size. Um, but anyways, that's just the way it is. Okay, so this needs to be the fastest belt. So that belt can run that way. Run that way. All right, and rather simply, we could just do another one of these right here and say, yep, this is what has to go into that conveyor wall hole. So there we go. The fastest belt leads in, goes up here, and then on our upper line, basically everything um, kind of gets divided between all the machines. 
I think I've done that right. I think I've, all the machines have it, right? So that one's done. It has this sulfur line on the bottom. That one's done as the sulfur line on the bottom. And then these two have the sulfur line and the coal line on top. Yeah, it seems good to me. Don't think I've forgotten anything. Uh, we just need to hook these bottom lines back up, but that should be it. <coughs> Excuse me again. Okay, cool. And just to, I don't know, just for aesthetics sake, let's just try to make these look a little bit nicer. One, two. That's all it needs. One, two. And one, two. There we go. So a bit of a mess in there, really, but at least it's, uh, I think it's all hooked up. So then this is going to be making uh, compacted coal. So that's 25 per minute and 25 per minute. So both of them are going to be compacted coal. The other four are going to be making black powder, which consume much less. So black powder, that's only 15 and 15. So 15 times 4, because we've got four of these machines, is 60. So that's 60 in total. And then we've got 25 and 25, which is 50. And obviously our belt is 120. So it's 110 is what we're consuming. So we've got an overflow of 10 sulfur, I guess. And that's just the way I'm happy to leave it until we sort this place out to make it a little bit better. Like I said, I'm not too sure what later down the line sulfur is going to be used for, or if it's going to need, be needed for anything else. So it's fine the way it is. Um, let's just make then organization. We'll make an industrial storage box just because it's going to store up a lot. And that's going to store our compacted coal. And then it's going to need a merger. This doesn't actually need a merger, but I'll just pop one there anyway. I'll just put a second tier belt into here and into there. How much does this output? 25 per minute. Actually, it doesn't even need a second tier belt then. We can just give it a, a level one belt. Oh, that was a level one belt. <laughs> okay, never mind then. Good. By the way, a lot of people mentioned before, I don't think I addressed it in the last episode, or sorry if I didn't or did. Um, in the iron smelter, sorry, the forge, the steel refinery, for the longest time, these miners were actually overclocked to produce 270 resources per minute, but I had the belt limiting it to 120. So each one was producing 130 or something like that for a total of two of them combined to 270. I fixed it, so don't worry about that now. It's fixed. <laughs> a lot of people mentioned it many, many times. Um, but it was a mistake. Because, yeah, I was wondering why there was gaps, and that's why. It's just that I overclocked, but didn't actually give it the correct belt to handle its overclocking. All right, so we're just going to have to go to, like, somewhere like here, and then just raise it. Okay. All right, great. That should be everything done. We just need to hook up the power poles, and that's it. And then we're out of here, and then we'll go for the Caterium factory. This has actually taken a little longer than I thought, but it is what it is. Um, so yeah, let's just say the power lines are in the very center, so we'll just go like this, I guess. Alrighty. So, this now needs to be connected to downstairs. Which I suppose we could do a double wall outlet. Oh my god, <laughs> I didn't mean that. Oh no. So <laughs> I can't believe I just went through the hole. Alright. Sucked me right in. So, there we go. That's the connection point. We'll just connect it right there. Alright, so that's all powered now. Haven't hooked up the miners yet, though. That one is hooked up, so coal is feeding out already. Okay, that's going to start powering on. So, the last thing to do is just hook up the final boxes, and then everything should get made. So the final box will just be somewhere over here. Uh, organization, industrial storage, we'll just slot it 
maybe just right here. And then just hook these up with mergers. Alright, we've done it. Okay, so there we go. So that's six assemblers, and that is sulfur and coal flowing into them. So maybe let's just climb one last time up top, and we can watch this all go in, and then we'll open up the mom, the mam, and start crafting our Nobilis detonator. So it's, it's not the most efficient, but it's not terrible either. It's just 10 extra sulfur, and then a lot of extra coal. Definitely don't need 240 coming out of there, but whatever. And it is manifold line, so it's going to take a while. Excuse me for the final ones to be powered up. But there we go. We can see all the black powder now coming out with our four little machines. And that end line should just be like completely full once all these get up to ramp up to full thing. And we can see our um, compacted coal. It just looks a little bit thicker than coal normally does. A little bit bulkier, boxier. And it makes five at a time. It's kind of weird that it gets made in a, an assembler. Feels like it should be like made in a compressor or something like that. That might be an interesting different type of machine. But I suppose you don't want to be making machines that only really ever needed once. Alright, cool. So we did it. It's pretty um, ominous music in the background. But it's done. Now, given a little bit of time, this will just pile up these boxes. If we ever need to come back out here, you know, we'll just uh, grab what we need. So, uh, let's just check that off the to-do. So, that's to-do sulfur mini factory. And that's 60 black powder. So, we'll just organize our UI. We'll just build the MAM. <clears throat> Go to the sulfur chain, and there we go. The novelist detonator needed... 50 black powder, we're after just getting 60. We have the pipes and the cables with us. So let's go. Alright, the analysis nov novelist detonator is completed. The next one we need is 100 black powder for the expanded tool belt. So I'll just wait to get that as well. That'll be out done in no time. But in the meantime, what we can do is build this novelist detonator and start using it. So we've got an equipment, equipment workshop built here. Novelist Detonator requires an object scanner, which we have one in our inventory right now anyway. 50 cables and 10 steel beams. And then we can make the actual Novelist. So these are basically the bombs. It's like C4, essentially. You drop on something. Alright, we've got five. That should be more than enough for what we need. What is with the music? It's so ominous. It's more dark than the fa Factorio music we put on before. I want some cheery, upbeat music. We just got some stuff done. Come on, let's go. <laughs> All right, we're going to have to wait until we get 100. We're close, though. And we can then take a quick look at where we're going to be heading next. On the map. In fact, I might update the map right now to say that we've already built this instead of just having sulfur deposit written here. Yes, yeah, so let's do that. So... That's the coal deposit, that's the sulfur deposit. So I'm just going to put down a new marker here and say this is going to be the sulfur refinery. Give it a factory image, select a color. Sulfur, I guess, is kind of a goldish brownie color. Something like that. Make it a large icon. Highlight if it's near me. And say yes. So there we go. So we can remove this marker now and remove this one. I know that that's where the sulfur refinery is. So, we have our sulfur refinery, steel refinery, iron, and copper. And then in the north, we have an idle ore extraction. So I've got two big foundries there, that, or um, factories that just don't do anything. There's just ore being extracted and just stored. And then there's coal power. Alright, there we go. We get some nice pretty music again. Alright, let's grab that 100. Create the... We have our noblest detonator, but we want to have enough um, to get that extra tool belt slot thing as well. So what's that? 118. We have enough. All right. So let's go sulfur one hand equipment slots. Now we can just hold more stuff, I guess. I've also got 100 sulfur in my belt, so I'm just going to throw that into one of these machines. That one's already at 100. Has been expanded. So is that one. There we go. Maxed out. 
All right, great. So those machines should just keep going now. Love to look at these, by the way. We never really take the time to like just look at the actual models of things. That's part of the enjoyment. Our lovely little black. Where are we get? It's funny. People in the, I think I saw on Reddit recently we were saying, um, where do they get you know screws come in a big blue plastic box? And they were like, you know, all it's doing is compressing rods down. Where's it getting the plastic from? You can make the same case here. It's like, where's it getting a little bottle and a little cap from? It's mashing sulfur and copper, uh, coal together, and yet we get a lovely little package out of it. Some f fancy future technology right there. All right, we are good to go. Let's get out of here. Let's activate our... Well, once we get to the Caterium area, we can do our first controlled explosion. Controlled detonation. So down we go. And that is at least sulfur automated for a little while. Black powder automated and compressed coal automated. In fact, should we take some compressed coal with us? Yeah, maybe, actually. Sorry, let's just take some of that with us. We can bring it to the coal power facility. See what the burn rate is. Although I don't don't really feel like I'll have enough time in this episode to even get over there. I'm like halfway over halfway through it, I feel. We still have to build a Caterium factory. Oh, we have a hundred even. Nice. Alright, cool. So where are we heading? Heading down here and around and across. Okay. Whoa. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> He'll be fine, don't worry, he gets up. He gets up. I mean, he might not walk right for a few days, but he'll be okay. Alright, there we have our lovely steel refinery. Doing the business. Power! Oh, yeah. Got some air time there. Alrighty, so here we are. Second project for this particular episode, but we get to have a little bit more fun with this one because there's some boulders blocking it. So let's just make a dash over there. This bridge we built earlier. Oh. Really should hit him and then shoot him, I guess. Alright, good job. So... I've extended power out here, like I said, in between episodes, just to get us ready to go. Um, okay, so we have to clear this foliage as well. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I kind of forgot to pick up the other portable miner. I think it'll be okay, though. We've got enough for this one, at least. Um, so, where do we get this? There it is. Always test the plunge before we use it. And then we've got five ammunition. So we just, if you hold down left click, you can just throw it, and it sticks. And we'll just get some distance. There we go. It's as easy as that. I suppose I could have um, probably put it in between. Oops, took a photo. Probably could have got rid of both at one go. Boom. It actually gets rid of um, foliage. Let's try this. Oh, wow. Now, I don't think it gets rid of rocks normally, does it? Let's test that out. I'll just put one on a rock. I don't think so. Let's see. That'd be pretty damn good if it did. Oh, I'm so... S okay, um, so yeah, so it gets rid of rocks. Let's try this one then. Puh. Cool, so it does work. I didn't think that worked. I guess if the rock is small enough and it's one of the ones that maybe can be cleared with a chainsaw, it, it does get rid of it. Good to know. Alright, nice. Now let's just get rid of this little thing as well. <coughs> oh, it was a necessary sacrifice, okay? Don't judge me. All right, let's get our foundations placed down. This one's a little bit more straightforward, although we're on a very small plateau, so we're going to have to build tight. So I've laid this one out to be an 8x6, I think. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. That's 2, and then we need 6 to come out this way. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
be a little too far out there, I don't know. Not sure how far it really came over. We'll check in a minute. Might be more out on the left than it was on the right. Mm, it looks like maybe. I don't know. Maybe we'll just leave it the way it is. I'll be fine. I think it, I think this does have to be on the edge based on... Yeah, I think that's as far over as we go. In fact, I think I've gone even too far over. I think I don't even need this area. Let's get rid of that. Alright, cool. So that means it's actually going to come out even one more. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Am I doing this? Oh, sorry. I am doing it the wrong way. That's why. One, two... One, two, three, four, five, and this comes out one, yeah. And then this goes by eight. Yeah, so that's one, two. So we go all the way to seven, there. All right, nice, got it. So we just fill all this in, and this will be our little uh, Caterium factory. And I think what we're going to be making here is quick wire. Again, not really sure if we need other things later down the line, but the way I've got this worked out, I think we can get something like 400 quick wire per minute in this tiny little area here. But it's gonna be quite the strain on power power might even trip with something like this there's a lot of assemblers or um, constructors in this in this area and we're gonna be overclocking that machine but it's a much more straightforward build we don't have any assemblers so we don't have to worry about building up tall uh, so yeah 240 ore per minute of course we want this to be 270 okay so 270 coming out that way coming out hot all right, let's begin. So what we're going to be starting off with then is all these smelters. And we're going to want smelters to come in. Like I said, it's going to be compact. So pretty much... Yeah, just one over. And then I'm not sure how far down. Probably about there is good. So we needed six smelters. And then this is going to go into seven constructors. Right, and that gives us just enough space on the edge to come around. If we need to use... I'm going to put a storage box here. Alright, so let's set this to be Caterium Ingots, which we've, of course, researched in the MAM. If you don't know how to do that, you open up the MAM, you find some Caterium Ore out in the world, and you toss it in uh, and research it. It's only a little bit, and then you're able to find the actual deposits. That's how we found this one here. So there we go. Caterium Ingots, we'll just copy and paste that. So, copy and paste, paste. This is all going to be quick wire, so we don't have quick wire yet. We'll have to research that. So we have to refine a certain amount of ingots before we can get the quick wire. So it's six in and seven out, from what I remember. That's because it's going to be 15 per minute and 45 per minute coming in. So 15 per minute times six. So 30, 60, and 90. And then can't remember, but I looked up whatever Caterium is going to need. So we'll just get this smelting first, and then we can hook up the rest. So what we're going to do is do a manifold splitter line again. This one's really close to home. There we go. All right, good. So that's all up and running. We just obviously have to hook all this up to power now. So let's get our power lines down. So we'll just do what we've pretty much always done, which is just pop them right next to the exit points or entry points, however you want to look at it. Connection point really would be the right term. All right, and this has its thing. Yeah, we'll just stick this here as well. So let's put it there. So I can hook up to that. I like to just, I'll cut that line. We don't want things cooking just yet until everything's hooked up. And just temporarily, we'll just stick that one here and just connect that up. I'm going to change that line later. That is everything hooked up pretty much. So just individually queue it. Get those yellow lights on. So it means they have power. They're on the network, but they just haven't activated yet. Alrighty. Should we get it? Get it firing? Let's do it. That's our first look at Caterium Ore. 270 per min. Back to 
we just back off and climb this real quickly. There we go, you can see it flowing down. Nice, straight in. So we had to look at it, what was it? It was 45 per minute. So what is 45 times six? 270. What do we have coming out of here? 270. You love to see it, don't you? All right, great. So let's get our mom built, our MAM. And let's go to the Caterium chain. We need 50 Caterium ingots in order to get quick wire and then new shop products as well, which I'm actually not even too sure what they are. So we need 50 in total. That's just about gonna be 10 here. At the end struggles a bit, but we've got our 50. That's going to give us the recipe for quick wire. Unos, dos, and tres. Awesome. All right, finally. So quick wire. The next thing we could also get is zip lines. We have the cables for it. Um, I kind of actually I'm a bit low on cables, so I'll save it for building this factory. 100 Caterium, so 100 quick wire is needed here in order to get Caterium Electronics, which will unlock some more nodes. And I think somewhere around here is the smart splitter, which is what I want to work towards. So we need to hook all these up now. So that's going to be, uh, let's just access this thing here. Quick wire. 60 per minute is what the output volume of this is, and it only takes in 12. So it's kind of an awkward number. We're making 15. So 12 per minute times seven machines. That's 84 coming in. So 84 is the best I can get it, right? We're outputting 90. That's pretty good. So a little bit of excess, not too bad. That's what our overflow will be for in future. Um, now I might have built these too close, it seems, because we need to run... Yeah, they're just a little bit too close. That's alright, though. Okay, so that took me a little bit longer than expected. I made a few mistakes with the splitters. I put down mergers. They were facing the wrong way, so... I just cut all of that out because it was a disaster, but I've got it running now. So basically what we have is six smelters on the right side feeding into six mergers that all go along one belt all along down this way and then are split seven times amongst seven constructors. Now I've actually turned off the miner just really quickly. I'm trying to save on power. I'm low-key a little bit worried that I'm going to run out of power. I think we're going to be using our biomass burners excess at the moment, so I just don't want everything to be powered on just yet, just in case. Save a little bit and then at the end we'll turn it all on and let it all flow. Speaking about letting it all float, there's seven machines here producing 60 quick wire, which means we've got 420 quick wire coming out, which means we're going to need two separate belts. The best belt I have right now can carry seven, uh, 270. So, you know, we're obviously going to have to split three machines onto one belt and four onto another belt and then combine them into probably an industrial container because that can actually have two inputs, which is perfect. Now we don't have to merge anything back up. So, let's get to work on that. But before we do that, I want to put down a wall here with a door. And we'll build a little walkway that can lead us out down the center. Uh, like this. And we can decide on things there as well. In fact, I might just delete this one and change this one to a walkway that turns. Uh, this side, I guess. And then maybe just brings us out that way. I'll probably change where that... Actually, yeah. Something like this. Change where that power pole goes in a moment. Maybe two. Something like that. And then we can just walk along and do it from up here. So, almost as a temporary measure, we'll just build the one without any rails. That'll help us build. Okay, cool. Right, so, yeah. So, essentially, we just need to divide up two lines now. So, that's basically it. And then at the end of this, we can create a little area for our mom. So the last three, I think, will be raised. That makes sense, right? And they're going to have to be raised on a Mark III. So one, two, three. Now, just to line this all up, we can have it on the exact same line, which might, might make it look a little bit nicer. Let's go one, two. Is that the one? Yeah, so that's, that's where we need to be. Uh, and yes, it does need to be a merger, actually, so that's good. So let's go with a merger. One. God, I'm really struggling with these today. I don't know why. Alright, merger going that way, and the same with this one, then. 
One, two, and a merger going that way. So they should, if they don't automatically connect, they'll look almost like they are. Okay, and the last merger then, there. All right, just get rid of all of that. So there we go, we're floating, but looking good all the same. So the last thing then would be this one needs its own merge line in line with the other ones. And they could travel alongside each other, which will look cool. Now, i got to be careful not to fall off the edge here. But I'm confident it doesn't go all the way to the back. S nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so, great. Let's just hook these up. So, how much are we outputting? 60 per minute, so that could just be a regular belt. In we go. 60 per minute. In we go. Now, by the way, many people keep telling me, put the belt down first and then put the mergers into it. I've done that numerous times throughout these videos, but a lot of the time, I'd say even half the time I do it, even when holding control, trying to snap them in, they don't snap, and I don't know why. So I have to, uh, you saw in the previous episode, actually, didn't I build two in a row? So it's like, oh, we'll fake snap into the one in front of it, even though we're going along a belt in front of a machine. So I don't, I don't know if that's just me. But that keeps happening, so I'm going to keep doing that, basically. I'm just, I prefer building this way now, because there's no, at least you don't make a mistake this way. It just works. Um, so that's what we need there. We're going to need another one of those somewhere about here. And then... Nice, right, the last thing then is to actually put this in a big industrial storage box, um, somewhere about here. <clears throat> Something like that, I guess. Is that okay? Drag this all the way out. One, two. Connect it in. So that's the bottom line done, and then we just need that top line to come in. Basically in the same way. And it'll, I think it just automatically does it, does it? Mm, kind of, not really. Almost. Well, this is two away, right? So, one, two. Okay. Alright, nice. So we are feeding two lines of quick wire into this thing. This is going to be just piling them up. Look how good that is. Now, our miner is actually off right now. We'll turn it back on in just a second. Uh, we just need to get back up to the top. So I didn't actually build a way to get up there. I had a ladder in place that I just removed a minute ago. <laughs> yeah. But we can just hop over this way, I guess. So we don't need this walkway anymore. That can go. All right, cool. So this one, I'm, I'm going to keep this walkway, and this will lead out to the center point, and it'll allow us to access this box. Now, in future, this box is probably going to move to the front or something. Maybe I could reverse that line so we could go left and come up and get out that way. Have a truck stop and pick it all up or something. That's something we need to do is focus on logistics uh, and transport. So um, architecture, we need the kind of base opening here. And then we need to wrap around with corner bits. So we need a flat bit there, a corner bit. Uh, that's pretty much it, I guess. Just this last one here. Okay, cool. We've got our little, um, walkway. A little bit of clipping through. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's a little light bulb. Who cares? Um, let's go... Mom. And we can access this, can we? Yes, we can. Alright, so what did we need? We needed... A hundred... Quick wire. We've got nearly 400 already in the bank. And the machines are off. That's just how much this place is going to be producing. It's crazy. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, so, Caterium Electronics, finally. Boom. Alright, so that's done. Now we've got access to Power Poles Mark II, which I think have seven or maybe eight connections instead of four. But they also cost quick wire to put down, so you could, you know, 
Bit of a trade off. Although we've got a load of quick wire now. We then have the unlocked. zip line. I say get the zip line done. What does this take? The AI limiter. We can get that right away as well. All right, so that is our zip line. We can dash along. Um, we're going to have to make an equipment workshop actually to do that. Now, I've seen a lot of people say they don't like the zip lines. I'll have to do it just somewhere over there. I've never really used them. Actually, I don't think I've ever used them. I've just seen videos. Now, I think it takes a Xeno Zapper before you can make it. Zip line, there it is. We've got everything we need. Yeah, we just need a Xeno Zapper. Okay, let's get one of those. Create now a zip line thingy. <laughs> Faster traversal. All right, let's see. So I'm not too sure. You just left click to hook up, do you? Oh my god, here we go. It's pretty slow though. I guess that's probably why. Oh, and you have to jump between poles, do you? Oh yeah. Okay. I can get down with that. It's no hypertube, I guess, but that's fun. Can we go up, actually, I wonder? Oh my god. <laughs> it's a little intense. Oh no. <laughs> I can't do it over the cliffs. I really don't want to die. Can we go up the other way, though, I wonder? Or is it only zip line down, I guess? That would make sense, right? Oh, after coming so far. God damn it. Well, it's still fun to try it out. Alright. I'll play around with the zip line in between just to get my bearings with it, because I'm just a little unsure of how they work right now. Uh, in terms of if you have to go up or down. So let's just turn this on. Alright, we're flowing again. 270 per minute into six smelters, all producing Caterium ingot. Six smelters into seven constructors, all producing Caterium wire, which is going to now just start flowing like crazy along the, uh, the belts. The both belts should be almost maxed out. 420 is what we should be building up per minute into here. Uh, so what else can we get with Caterium? So we get the AI limiter, right? Yeah, so AI limiters are going to be made in an assembler, and they're going to be used for the smart plating. Smart, smart sp splitter, sorry. So we need 10 of them. This needs 50, so we need 60 in total. Programmable, I don't even know what that is, a programmable splitter. Hmm. Maybe you can take in certain amounts or something, I don't know. So smart splitter, that's obviously what we're working towards, what I really, really want. Um, so it's going to need 10 AI limiters. Now, we could just automate that, or we could just make it ourselves, I think, in a crafting bench, can't we? Oh, we can make 9. We're short on quickwire. That's why we've got loads of that. So just make 10 of these, and we'll get our first smart splitter. We'll set up a very basic smart splitter just to look at it, and then we'll say we're done. So that's 9. The other thing we obviously have to do, toggle these off. So we did our Caterium factory. We've researched almost everything we want in that mom now. We just need one more of these. So let's just grab that last little bit. Man, yeah, it struggles to... I guess there's. it's clipping with the machine on that side. On this side, it's okay, is it? Don't know. Just pop it down there for a moment. All right, cool. Now we'll just get that last AI limiter. So it takes copper sheeting and uh, quick wire. So we've got a whole factory out here that's made all that copper sheeting. That's just stored up, not doing anything. So that's why we need to start setting up roads to carry stuff to each other. Because they're too, too far apart now to send them to each other. I'm not going to be doing it manually. Um, so yeah, let's go. So Caterium, smart splitters, boom. All right, nice. There we go. I think the place looks nice. <laughs> Just a small little place, but it's like really compact. And I'll put the rest of the walls around it then myself. Um, yeah, it's going to get a little finicky with that bit, so we'll just leave that. Alright, cool. So, really quickly, I think I could just hook up an assembler. Oh, I'm short of cable. Oh, I might have to leave it then. Do I have any regular wire in my inventory? Oh, I do. Or well, I could just make some cable really quickly. So just make some regular cable. Just want to get that um, assembler up. It can make this stuff in the background. Then we can play with our very own first smart splitter just to see how it works. Just make a little grid of four. Put a smart splitter down in the middle of it. I guess it's going to probably take an AI limiter to even make one of these. There it is. 
Yeah, so it needs an AI limiter. Okay, I'll have to make another one of those. Right, so, one AI limiter. Now we'll just make an assembler machine. Just to test this all out. This is going to be making AI limiters. So it needs copper sheeting and quick wire. Let's just get the ball rolling though. Put, put in both. Hook it up to power. All right, that's good. So that's, that's working away now, making AI limiters just in the background for us. Very, very crudely, but at least it's doing it. So now we can just, do we, I made that extra AI limiter. We can just put down the logistics thing. Smart splitter and see how that really works because I haven't seen one yet. So let's say we're feeding something in from there. And let's get rid of that. Let's just expand this out. Let's just make a little box <coughs> that says we're going to throw something out. That's going to go into here. It's going to get divided up into two different things. So one's going to go that way. One's going to go that way. Not that it really matters, obviously feeding into one machine, but I just want to see. Oh, here we go. So here we can go. So left, center, and right. So I'm assuming this is facing forward. Or is this facing forward? No, I'm assuming this is. This is in, so we're facing forward. So that's left, center, and right, I assume. So let's go right. We want it to be um, copper sheets and left, and center, because we're coming out the middle. <coughs> Excuse me. We want it to be... Uh, Caterium Quickwire, that's what it's called, sorry. There we go. Okay. So it doesn't need power or anything, that's good. So we'll just go take everything out of this now. I'll just put it into this box. So now it's coming out together, you know. Let's just say it's a messy conveyor belt, just to check that out. And there we go, it's splitting correctly. We did it. Just wanted to test it and see that working. Obviously, this wouldn't be a this is a weird use case of how you do it. But I've got plans for the quartz factory. The quartz factory is going to need this smart splitter because I've got plans for splitting silica and quartz crystal on the same belt. So with a smart splitter, it'll just do all that for us. But there we go. We can make AI limiters. So I'll make 50 of those before the next episode and then we can get that final thing in the mom. But that's going to be it. That's our little factory. So we just got done with that. So the next one, we're going to be expanding power and doing quartz. Pretty happy with it. Look at the look at the belts, man. They're flying. There's a lot of stuff. The bottom tier actually isn't getting as much. Oh, I guess because it takes longer to get down to here. Yeah. But they should have what they need. Let me just check that it is working. Yeah, they, at least they're getting it. Yeah, they should get it. So it's just manifold. It'll take a while to fill up, but they will get everything. And as long as nothing is backed up, I'll just double check everything, but from my understanding, these belts should mean that everything's totally fine. And we should see iron, or not iron, or caterium ore just piling along all these areas. And then this thing is just, look how much we've done already, 2,000, you know, it's crazy. So we'll have loads by the next episode, that's why we need those fall-off machines, and the awesome sink and stuff. Alright guys, that's going to be it for this episode. Uh, building heavy. Yeah, well, I mean, every episode is going to be building heavy, I guess. But at least a little bit different. Going out and actually getting different resources. And we have a little bit more of that to do. Power and then quartz. And then we can focus on the space elevator's next milestone. And see what lies in store for us in the future. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching, and remember, if you want to support the channel directly, you can click the join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. You'll also get exclusive access to my Discord, where there's dedicated channels for each series I'm doing, and it's a great place just to meet others and make some friends.